I'm Sherry Boshert reporting from the annual meeting of the American College of Emergency Physicians. I'm with Dr. Jeffrey Sankoff and we're talking about dyspnea. So when someone sees a patient in the emergency room with dyspnea, walk them through the steps they should take. So everybody with dyspnea should be presumed to have a cardiopulmonary cause. And so the beginning should always be a good history and physical, uh, including auscultation of both the lungs and the heart, followed by a chest x-ray. And then if the chest x-ray comes back normal, uh, you really want to gauge what the response to oxygen is because that's really going to help you determine whether or not you're dealing with a pulmonary or extra pulmonary cause. If they respond to oxygen and have an abnormal chest x-ray, then your diagnosis is referable to the lungs or to the heart. If, however, their chest x-ray is normal and they do not respond to oxygen, then you've got an extra pulmonary cause of their dyspnea and it's time to start broadening your differential. What would you say is the most interesting case of dyspnea that you've seen in the emergency room? Uh, Definitely some of the acquired hemoglobinopathies are interesting because they show up in patients that uh, definitely require a lot of detective work. I actually participated in a CPC at the uh, Society of Academic Emergency Medicine and discussed a case on a 28-year-old woman who presented with shortness of breath and some mild hypoxia. And, uh, I mean, for all uh, intents and purposes, I mean, she looked everything like a pulmonary embolism or uh, some other kind of uh, acute pulmonary process. But it was only through really working through a very broad differential diagnosis that you could get down to the fact that she didn't meet a lot of the classic findings and classic laboratory analyses that you would expect with that type of diagnosis. And it was only by doing that that you eventually got down to the fact that really what her issue was is that she'd been on a sulfa drug and she had an acquired self-hemoglobinemia. And, and to me, that was a, a real eye-opener that extra pulmonary causes do exist. You do see them rarely, but when you do, they, they require some real thinking and uh, they're, they're definitely interesting. I, I think, again, you know, the most important thing Remember the heart and lungs first and foremost. This is not common. But that being said, uh, I think that uh, as pressed as we are in the emergency department, it reminds us that uh, emergency medicine can be a very intellectual experience and uh, patients can present with common symptoms of uncommon diseases. And so we always have to keep our differentials broad and we have to remember to look for things that we don't commonly see. 